Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's bite and pray as we start. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this place. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that your spirit will visit us this morning and transform our lives. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, good morning again. So this morning, we are talking about self-esteem. Self-esteem. I want you to write it down. Self-esteem. Now, self-esteem is a combination of two words. Um, yourself and then estimation. Yourself and your estimation. So, yourself is you. And estimation is like a calculation of yourself. Are you get what I'm saying? If you are solving mathematics problem now, then I say, okay, what was your answer? If your answer was um, 15.936, you can estimate it to what? You can approximate it to what? Okay, you, you, are, you are solving a mathematics problem. And you got 15 point nine. Three six. If you wrap, if you round everything up, what will it give you? Uh uh. Yes, to the nearest figure. You were solving a mathematics problem, and you got an answer. The answer you got was fifteen point nine three six. Blah blah blah. Now, if you're going to wrap everything up, what will be the answer? No, now you guys are not getting what I'm saying. Is what? Is sixteen now? It's as simple as that. You are solving a math, um, mathematics problem and you got 15.9 and they said, just estimate everything. You give it 16. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, we are looking at the calculation of yourself, how you see yourself. And it's very important. Because if you don't see yourself well, it's going to affect you. And it's going to affect how people treat you if you don't see yourself well. I'm trying as much as possible to make it simple. Because the way you see yourself is actually different from the way people see you. But people will, if you express the way you see yourself, it will affect the way other people see you. Are we on the same page? Do you understand what I'm saying? Please, stand up. Is she fair? Are you fair? You are not fair. And you guys said yes, right? And she's fair. And she said she's not fair. Are you fair or not? You are not fair. Is she fair? Okay, please sit down. So she she doesn't know how she looks. Just like a man that looks at himself in the mirror and quickly forgets who or what it looks like how are you seeing yourself i want you to write it down how, how do i see myself i came with high tension but you guys are trying to bring me down <laughs> how do you see yourself so your friends walk up to you and tell you see your eyes cross eyes your eyes are not okay you are not even you don't even you can't even speak good english and you begin to feel bad so you are estimating yourself according to your friend's perspective the way your friends are seeing you that's how you are seeing yourself they tell you oh you are all do you don't even know anything look at you and you believe what they said that means you have estimated yourself the way your friends saw you are we together now in your class Anytime you raise up your hand and you want to answer and your friends look at you and they laugh at you and then you, your hand begins to come down. And you feel, I don't, I don't even compare to peace. I, I don't think I know anything. That means you are estimating yourself wrongly. And that is what we see around us. Especially among students. You look down on yourself too much. 
you look down on yourself. That's why you always say, I can't. They say, oh, do so, 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 and so, they say, I cannot do it. They say, oh, solve this mathematics problem, say, I can't do it. Because you believe in your heart of heart that you don't know anything. And a lot of people would have felt that if you have parents that always talk down on you, they always insult you, they shout at you, they treat you anyhow, they compare you with your siblings, they shame you, they humiliate you, you have a tendency of having low self-esteem. I want you to write it down. Low self-esteem. You are seeing yourself lower than, than you are. If you have friends, you have parents, you have teachers, you have people around, you always talk down. They tell you, oh, look at you, you don't even know anything. Look at yourself. You are dirty. You are ugly. You have low self-esteem. And low self-esteem actually starts from, from pregnancy. Some women, they didn't want to get pregnant. But something happened. And then she got pregnant. So the child starts suffering from the womb. Because the emotion of the mother affects the emotion of the child. Another example. They've been waiting for, they've been praying, oh God, please give us, give us a boy, give us a boy. Maybe your mom has given birth to three girls or four girls and um, your dad is putting her under pressure as if she's the manufacturer of children. That I need a male child. I need a male child. I need a male child. And um, she got pregnant. And um, she feels, well, this may be the male child. And when she went for scan, she now discovered that it was a girl. You see the hour? That this child is another girl, fifth girl. Then she begins to feel bad. She gets depressed. And then she shows her husband the results, the scan. And the man says, ah, you have given birth to a girl again. Ah, I'll go and look for another woman outside. What is happening between your daddy and your mommy begins to affect you in the womb. So some children begin to feel rejected from womb. They feel so unloved compared to this. The woman has been expecting a male child and she got pregnant and they checked and it was a boy. And they started celebrating. They were jubilating and she's so happy. Every time the man will lay his head on, on the, and be listening to the kick of the child. You understand? You say, oh, I love, I love him. Ah, what name should we give him? And they start pampering that boy from the womb. So the boy will come into this world feeling loved. It starts from the womb. So most things that happen to us today or most weaknesses or challenges we have started from the womb and even homosexual tendencies she feels oh i need a girl i need a girl child and she starts treating the mom now start treating the child from the womb as if the child is a girl and you know because she was expecting a girl she bought all baby stuff for girl pink you know pink pants pink um, um you understand pink everything decorated the house and she checked and he's a boy. And she said, ah, I beg go. I cannot face this reality. And she starts treating that male child as if the child is a girl. That is where homosexual tendencies also come from. That's the root. Because, listen, you need to check the root cause of a lot of things. If you are looking down on yourself, you need to go back and check. As I was researching on this, I listened to a baby, a, a lady, I mean, um, I think it was um, about eight, nine years ago. So I don't know what's up with her now. And she said that she was born by a prostitute. A prostitute is a woman who commercializes sex. She used to have sex with men to collect money from them. And her father was a drug addict. 
he was selling drugs he was a pimp he was like the boss of those who are in um, that hotel you understand so he impregnated her and at the end of the day because they could not raise her they went to put her in foster home so all her life she was in foster home she was in um, all these uh, like motherless baby's home you understand she was, that was how she grew up and she all her life she was looking for somebody that would love her because her mother was irresponsible the father was irresponsible all her life she was looking for somebody that would love her as at the time she was giving this talk she was out of three marriages she was still looking for love that she got married first when she was 18 by 25 she was divorced married another man by 30 she divorced the man married another man so as at the time i listened to her she was about to marry another man the fourth man her issue was like the issue of the woman at the well that jesus met the woman of um, samaria so most of our problems started from when we were in the womb when there was no money your father and mother they were arguing fighting different issues and it started affecting me because we live in a fallen world we live in a world where things don't balance we live in a world where things are upside down we live in a fallen world and the fallen nature of man affects every one of us and that is where your estimation that is what starts affecting your estimation now let me give you a flip side of the coin a lot of people have low self-esteem they are not confident they are timid they are afraid you know they believe they are good for nothing and all while some people believe that they are superior they believe they are better than everybody they believe that they can control people they can use people they can bully people they can you know clamp people down they call it high self-esteem i want you to write that one too high self-esteem they call it high self-esteem high self-esteem they overestimate themselves you get they believe they are better in fact there are some race on this earth that believes that they are pure breeds they are the pure people that every other person on earth are apes and gorillas and monkeys Abi, is that not um, is that not the reality they are domineering you know they they oppress people they bring people down and that was what happened during colonization white people still believe to today that they are superior they believe they are better than you they believe you are their slave they believe that they believe they can give you independence who are you to give me independence are you god so some people believe they are better and that is one of the world agenda the agenda is to reduce the population of the world if you guys don't know let me tell you today we are about six to seven billion people on earth their plan the people that think that they are better than everybody in the world their plan is to reduce the population of the world to less than one billion So that was that was the origin of covid covid is to reduce the population so that the elites on earth can be in charge of everything be in charge of the natural resources be in charge of money be in charge of governance be in charge of so many things and that is why you can see that there is little or no progress in our society because it is an agenda to keep them down to keep them in poverty to keep them oppressed so there are some people they call them kaba in this part of the world they say they are kaba they are the ones ruling everybody and can i tell you another one that is not far-fetched in your school you are in ss3 and you are a prefect and you are oppressing the juniors juniors cannot talk when you talk so you can see it because we we can blame white men what about us even in our school system if you go to public schools you see ss3s ask ss2s to kneel down and keep their mouth shut they slap them they beat them they tell them you go and wash toilets go and then they pick pick all the distance that was how we were trained that when you get to a certain class all of them 
Occurrency number one. You know what they call occurrency number one? They're small. They're these small, 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 small things. And that is what we say around. Even, even when you go to the house of God, you see some class of people who believe they are superior. You, who believe that the people who gather to listen to them, they are better than the people that gather to listen to them. They are, bad, they are, they are better with the cars, they drive, the houses, they live in. You understand? So you, you even see it in religion. It's everywhere. It's in religion too. Thinking that you are better than, than all of them. They don't know anything now. Oh my God, they don't know, they don't know Jack. And that is how lecturers treat students too. You see students fail a course for three years. Why? You see lecturers, they come to class anytime they like. They may not even come in a semester. They may come just twice. And they can't try that. The same lecturer in public university will be teaching in a private university and he can't try it in private university. So he comes, just tell everybody, go and read from chat up this, so buy my handout. If you don't buy the handout, they'll fail you. So every student in school begins to fear. You see your lecturer, you are cringing, you are afraid, you are fidgeting. You can't ask them questions. You can't, they are like the devil. You are afraid of them. In fact, some of our lecturers, we used to call them sadists. They say, ah, Mr. So, now sadist be that man. They don't laugh. They look down everybody. So, we have seen low self-esteem and what? High self-esteem. Now, can we be at the middle? Is it possible? If you are coming from low self-esteem, and you begin to work on yourself, you develop yourself, you read books, you went to school, you, you, you work on yourself. It gets to a point when you move away from that middle and you are tilting towards that prideful nature. Because it's a thin line. When you cross low self-esteem, you are working on yourself, you work on your confidence, you work on your oratory skills, you work on your tech skills, you work on this, you achieve that. And can I tell you ladies something? Thank God I'm speaking to girls this morning. Do you know that most ladies that are well-educated, they don't see husband to marry them. Am I, am I correct? I mean most, I didn't see everybody. While a lot of ladies that have made it in life, they are GMs of companies, they have a lot of money, you know, they command respect. So most of them don't have husband. So what they have acquired is now affecting their relationship because the man is thinking, where will I start from? This one don't I finish now. She'll be general manager and she's 29 years old or 30. I go, go marry him. Oh, no, I beg. She go they control me. She'll be controlling me like or people that are in our office. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? How do you navigate that part of your life? Now, let me start, let me, in, in a short time, because this is, I don't know if we come next year, we're going to continue. But this matter is not a matter of 20, 30 minutes. This is a matter that we need to sit down and resolve. Because in some areas of your life, you can have low self-esteem. And in some areas of your life, you can have high self-esteem. It's possible. Uh, someone can say, I don't have low self-esteem, but there are some things that will shame you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you a typical example. There's an hospital I used to visit once in a month or twice in a month. It's children that have disabilities. And I believe... Each time I'm going there, I dread going there because I see different cases. Children with Asperger's syndrome, autism, Down syndrome, orishi orishi, children that spit comes out of their mouth. And one of the things that I've noticed with those parents is that no matter how big their GP is, when they get to that hospital, they begin to think less of themselves because of their child. May you not see problem in this life, oh? When you get to the hospital, you see big, big cars parked outside. But because of the, some, some of their kids are already 10 years old, they cannot walk. They are carrying them. 
and you see the father, if you even see the father at all, you see the mother, she's depressed, she's scattered. She, she has not come by her, she has not made that, because the child has stressed her life out. So she's suffering esteem problem because of her child. As I was doing this research, I didn't even know how the speaker even doubled there and said she had a child, four-year-old child that was autistic and they were traveling to England from the U.S., and when they, end, when they were in the plane, this boy started inside the plane. He was shouting and everybody was everybody on the, bo- on the plane was looking at her with brother like, this child doesn't even have home training. How can you raise a child like this? And they didn't know that the child was autistic. She tried, she was, she was just, she was scattered. And she could not even talk. She was so down. You get? Please come on. You, okay, you don't know what autism means. Okay, autism are child, um, autistic children are children who are special. They call them special. They don't think the way every other children think. Some of them have ADHD. ADHD. They, they are restless. They can't stay in one place. They will be running up and down. You'll be catching them. They can't sit in one place. Most, some of them cannot look at you eyeball to eyeball for a long time. You understand? They will take their eyes off. Elon Musk was autistic. They said, um, what's his name? This footballer, Messi, was. So many people, they can't sit in one place. They are restless. Some of them sit in one place for five hours. They will not move. They are just reading book. And when you begin to engage with them, you are talking to them, they cannot, they are, they, they cannot relate with people. They are just different. That's autism. That's just a little explanation about autism. Because everybody needs to be educated about this thing. I, I discovered that in our society, a lot of people are ignorant. That's what, you just see a child. And the child is walking like this. Please come on. Mm. Jaundice. Okay. Alright, so jaundice is um, one of the things that affects children from birth. Babies. It happened to my second son. So, so that jaundice that instead of we going back home with him after my wife had delivered we were at the hospital the the child we were coming from home to go to hospital the child was spent extra time in, in the hospital and they would put them in inside one light blue light like this you understand the child will be there they'll be observing that child because they believe that if you take the child out the child will die so you leave the child there. So that jaundice is common to well, in fact. It exactly. So that is what now turns them into having autism, Asperger syndrome, ADAD. And I discovered that that period there were so many. When if ten women gave birth, you will see about eight or seven there. So we didn't know. And when we, they started, we started consulting with um, psy, psy, psychologists and psychiatrists. They, they asked, "Okay, this uh, child does this child have jaundice?" And I said, "Oh, we never knew." So those children are special, and no child is like the other child. Are you get what I'm saying? So when you see people like this in the society, have compassion. Some they bully them. In fact. In this part of the in in a, in in Africa, I think Zimbabwe. I I had to watch a movie where in that place, if you give birth to an albino, that albino must not come out. They will kill the child. Yes, even to recently, my wife told me that recently albinos in Nigeria protested that they don't employ them, they don't put them in high position. That they cannot, you know, albino. Do you know albinos? Albinos are people that their color is different. They are like white, so their eyes doesn't stay in one place. Their eyes shakes like this. It's albinism. It's not a disease. That's how God made them. So some people, because they are albinos, they feel other people are better than them. Another set of people are people that they call people that don't have eyes. They call them dwarfs. Do you know what they do with those people? They make comedy out of them. Some of them even join comedy. Some of them dance. Everybody will be laughing when they see them. And they make mockery of them. 
that you will not just see them outside. They have a community where they all come together, but the society ostracized them. That I listened to an interview by one of them, and the guy said, he said, when people are, when he enters a public transport and they are laughing at him, he tells them, did I make myself this way? Is it not God that made me this way? Then why are you laughing at me? That means you are mocking God. It means you are mocking God. So they don't give them high positions. They don't, they don't, they don't, the way they treat normal people isn't the way they, and these people are special because God wants to do special things through their lives. If that strength is cultured, is well cultured. Some of you are here, you are struggling with mathematics, but if I give you money, you will handle the money well. It shows that you are not a dollar. One of the things that breeds low self-esteem is comparison. When they always compare you, see your sister. Eh? Your sister had A1 parallel. Look at you. You are good for nothing. You don't know anything. You don't know comparison. Competition also breeds low self-esteem. That's why I think schools stopped them um, having first position. So they've stopped it. What they do now is prize giving day. They'll just tell you, you had A1 in this. They give you an award and that. That was why they stopped it. Because that competition started breeding problems in schools. You see? Instead of pushing competition, we should push collaborations. I work with you, you work with me, we help each other, then you shine. Time will not permit me to begin to read out some things to you. You shine. Let one person esteem the other better. That is the Bible way. That's God's way. When I see you, when I see you and I discover that you are talented in an area that I'm not talented, the owners lie on me to celebrate you and give you resources that will make you better in that aspect of your life. Collaboration. Everybody writes collaboration now. So when other people succeed, you are glad because they are succeeding. Collaboration. These are subjects that should be taught in our schools. Subjects like collaboration, like love, you know, like empathy. And that's why we have this counseling session so that we can teach you these things. Compassion. You see somebody who is walking on the street and is walking like this and spit is coming out of his mouth. You should have compassion, not bully that kind of person. Some, they will use some of them for money rituals. They say the money will come fast, fast. And in that... Um, African country, they use albinos to go and do money. They believe that that charm will give them money on time if they use an, um, a human being. Albinos. People that are not that tall. You're, you're brief people. Don't let's call them another name. Brief. People that are brief. Even people that have hunched back. Back and front. If you see anybody with any disability, don't make jest of them. It is wrong. Tell your neighbor, say it is wrong. It is wrong. If you see anybody with any disability, don't make a mockery of them. Be compassionate. Help them. Even blind people. I've met a lot of blind people on the way before and I ask them, where are you going to? Do you want to cross? Do you want to do this? They say, yes, I want to cross. Then you help the person cross. We see these people, and it's not as if we see them every day. We see them around us. You see somebody walking with a stick. He's walking with a stick. Instead of walking past the person, volunteer to help that person. Because in lifting people up, you are also lifted up. In pulling people down, you are pulling yourself down. Can you come forward and ask your question? You use the mic. You have to use the mic. Yeah. Is Enyola. But sometimes those blind people, they might just like behave blind. And when you help them, you don't know what can happen. It's like someone like they have charm with them. Maybe when you help them, they can just disappear. They can use it for anything. 
Okay, it's not completely true. And Yola said that some of those blind people, some of them have charm. And if you try to help them, you can disappear. Something can happen to you. Something, you understand? Can I tell you something? These are some of the fears that our parents put in us. Don't talk to strangers. Abby, you can go back to your seat. Don't they tell you that? They tell you, don't talk to who? And when I read my Bible, Hebrews 13 says, do not fail to entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unawares. Abraham saw three strangers and he invited them into his house, killed an animal. They ate, he baked bread and they said, this time next year, you will have a child. That was a stranger. In fact, when you meet somebody for the first time, the person is a stranger until you build a relationship with that person before the person now becomes your friend. Now, let me come to a question. She said, you see a blind person. See, listen, if you're a child of God, there is nothing they can do to you. You are a child of God. You are washed by the blood. Let them try. They can't try anything. So you won't say because people are using charms, you will not help anybody. If you are always considering bad things, you will not help anybody in this life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see a blind person, the person is going, you have what the person, the person is blind. The person is not even wearing glasses. You can see that this eyes is off. Or the person is wearing glasses and the person is walking, struggling. And you saw the person, hello sir, can I help you? How can a blind person harm you? It's impossible. A blind person cannot harm you. And in our society today, I'll take your question. In our society today, you're on a bus. You see an elderly woman. Mama, she's um, standing. And you are young. Why not tell her, mommy, please sit down. Then you stand. Because you are young. She said, no, 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 no. My daughter, no. You pay them 300. I paid 200. Let me stand. She said, no. Sit down, ma. That's courtesy. Yes, let me hear from you. My question, Sam, my question is, can we be in high esteem and also bound for people? Like, can we be in high esteem and also bound to people that we are in esteem? Like, when we are rich now, can we also, like, pretend that we are not and bound for low people, people that are poor? Understand a question. Now, if God, if you have... Okay, you have graduated, you have money, you are rich, you are placed in a high place. Carry with you humility. Humility is, is constant. Humble yourself. No matter the height, no matter what you know, always humble yourself. Because God resists the proud. James 4 verse 6. God doesn't want to have anything to do with a proud person. He receives the proud but gives grace to the humble. You see that everybody that came to Jesus, especially sinners, if they are humble sinners and they come to Jesus, Jesus meets their need. But the Pharisees, when they come to him and ask him questions in their pride, he tells them, woe, woe to you. Tell them, get out. Because they are proud. You get. So, if you are placed in a great place. Maybe you become the head girl of your school. Humble yourself. Don't shout at um, your juniors. Talk to them in meekness, in calmness. Talk to them as if they are your sister. They are your blood sister. Treat them that way. Don't look down on them. Because pride comes before a fall. An example of somebody who is about to fall is somebody who is proud. Nobody can talk to you. Nobody can counsel you. Nobody can correct you. Nobody can. Some of you, you are you have low self-esteem in your academics, but when they correct you, you have high self-esteem. Nobody can correct me. Oh, I don't like. I don't like it. Or somebody correct you from that day, you become the person's enemy. So you have to carry with you humility. You must know where you are coming from. And the people that get this wrong most of the time are people that were they were so poor. That God just had mercy on them and made them rich. And then they now become puffed up. Paul said, knowledge puffs up. But when you have knowledge, you have to treat that knowledge with humility. Where is the second person? Come and ask your question. Like the question Senior Yola said, 
um there are some people that when they want people to help them they'll act like they'll raise their eyeball up and keep something in front of them that anybody that come put them under their wrapper or anybody that steps there will disappear and turn into a chicken <laughs> home video nollywood nollywood they are bo- have you seen any with your where where did they happen yesterday your mommy told you but did you see it with your eyes now li- listen listen we should not be living in fear and the things we expose ourselves to actually make us fear own videos this thing that you're talking about the place i know i can see it is own video nollywood yes please come as at yesterday what happened yesterday night someone came to the show Please help him. He has not eaten with his sisters and senior sister and brother. So we're like trying to think. Okay, let's go inside, prepare something, and give him. He was like, no. He wanted more. And we started having some bad feelings of giving him that money. The moment he said we don't have money, he became rude and he suddenly said, so call this shop here. Yeah, there's no money in this shop. And he was the moment we just said you can leave. He ran not come back. He, we were like, maybe after asking the shop, we going to go to the next shop and ask. He ran. My mom had to say, go, follow them. I went, I could not see like, I could not even see the person that came to ask. I was like, so why do you expect me to help that kind of person? If I see the word there, I can just look at it. It's better I don't know. I want me to give you an cost, to give you what to cost me free. Mrs. Dumbery, a round of applause, everybody. She's going to tackle that. Hey, it is well. It is well. Okay, so hello, girls. Um, so first of all, you need to understand that yes, we agree. We are not saying that these things don't happen. The Bible talks about in the last days there will be a lot of evil out there. People will be imagining evil. They will sit in their houses and think of the next evil they they can do to you. So you need to be street wise. You can't afford to be dull when you get on the road there. So there'll be stuff. People will try different things. They will bring up like like the one you told me about now that, or that you told us about now. The person for heaven's sake might actually have evil intent. It's possible. So first of all, I, te- I, I, I teach my children to know that not everyone that smiles to, with you has your good intentions at heart. So you need to remember that. So when you go out there, the world is not, is not uh, candies and sweets. There are evil people out there who will try to arm you. Number two, but, which is the number two, you don't get to live in fear. If you watch too many home videos, your life will be ridden by fear. You would, every day, anybody you see that looks like Okoko, or who are the old video people now, you will just be thinking that this person more. And the person might not have any evil intention. But because you watch one old video that said the man came and did this and did this, then that person must be evil. You do not get to live your life in fear. And then at the point where you suspect, now that's number three, you have to walk with your fifth, it's like your sixth sense, your sense of intuition. Especially as a lady, there are some times that we just sense something is wrong. Don't, don't, don't deny that. Don't throw it away. When you are interacting with someone and you are or you are walking through a street and you begin to sense like you are uneasy, don't ignore that feeling. If you need to run, run away from there. If you need to go quickly to where people are, whatever you need to do, do it. But don't ignore your intuition when you begin to sense something is wrong. Now, like the situation of this guy who asks for money and you do not have money. There are many people if they come to ask me for money and I sense... I don't feel easy to give them money. I look for something else I can give them. I don't have money. Do you want food stuff? Okay, if you want food. If you don't want, then I can't help you. No big deal. But it's just a pity with where we are right now. In those days where we're growing up, you could give people anything and be fine with it. 
But because the days are evil, you cannot be, you have to be street wise. You have to know that walking on the streets, there is evil there with you. However, as I said, number two, you don't live in fear. But number three, follow your senses, your sixth sense. You have to take it with you. Number four, you need to know who you are. Which is why when we come, when we talk to you about building a relationship with God, it is the most important thing. The Bible talks about people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And if you don't know your God, what will happen to you? You'll be exploited. So you need, when we talk about a relationship with God, you need to build a relationship. There are times when the Holy Spirit will just tell you, stand up, leave this place now. And when you leave the place, something evil happens. So that means anybody who was there who couldn't hear God, evil would have happened to the person because he did not know his God. He does not have a relationship with God. There's so much evil in the land, but because we serve a God who's greater than the evil, we can go out. We can go out every day, interact with people and not be afraid because we know God will take care of us. See, even in your house, evil can come and meet you in your house. There was a time that a plane crashed, went to crash inside Ogba inside people's houses so you are saying there's evil outside i don't want to go even in the house evil came to meet them in the house what are we saying 9 9 11 people were at work evil came to meet them there the the the, the plane crash so evil does not have headquarters though there's no headquarters for evil it goes everywhere it appears everywhere your deal with god you wake up in the morning you talk to god about protection about guidance lead me as i go out today every evil eye will not locate me evil mouth will not talk to me they, 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 we hear of it there is one chance everywhere now in abuja just like two months ago a girl who was she was a victim of one chance took her to the hospital they refused to accept her and she died so if you think of the evil in the land even you will not even live again because the water you are about to drink you are wondering if someone has poisoned it so you cannot live your life reading by fear. You, it's not, and then you need to be streetwise. Don't think that every boy who smiles at you means good in their hearts. The, the, the last pathetic event that happened in, um, in Ejigbo, where a girl, her, her, her brother's friends, three of them came to the house and raped her in the house. If you talk about someone street, being street smart, for heaven's sake, you are the only person at home. Then three of your brother's friends come to see you. If I'm the one, I am outside already. I will not be in the house with you. Your brother is not even around. So why are you in the house with three guys? And they gang raped her. They put something in her mouth to gag her so she couldn't scream. They gang raped her and she died on that spot. So that's why I'm saying your intuition, don't, you are feeling uneasy. A guy is looking at you and you're already feeling funny. He's looking at you in a way that makes you, and you are still sitting down. Sense, you need sense. And you're smiling back and you think every, everybody is happy with you. Let me, let me round up with one story. So when I was in Jess 3, I went to study, I went to learn how to sew. So my mom, my parents were big on, while you're in school, learn something have a skill, learn, so you have something you're doing. So in GS3, I, during the holidays, I went to buy thread. And if you know how these thread um, counters, the, their boxes are, the, the glass is in front, the door is at the back. So this guy was sitting in the shop, I sat beside the door of the, of the box. And when I came, I said, I wanted to buy thread. He said, come in and pick it yourself. So gentle girl like me now, nah, I don't know anything now. Nah. I just entered, I went to pick the thread and the guy grabbed me. And I was doing, oh, leave me alone, leave me alone, oh, leave me alone. This, is, this house, this shop was in a compound though. People were outside though. And the guy would have raped me in the very coro coro of everybody. And I was like, oh, leave me alone, oh, leave me. I don't know how God saved me. I ran, my leg was touching my head. I ran. <laughs> When I got home, I cried all night. I was just shivering. That, oh my God. Oh my God. I was always ready. When I got to church the next day, I went to see my pastor. I was still crying. He said, what happened? I now told him. He almost smacked my head. He said, somebody wanted to rape you. And you're saying, he said, you didn't shout. You didn't break his head. You didn't carry something. I said, <laughs> you didn't shout. I love you. You're
your mouth are sweet. Ah, it's sweet to say. <laughs> oh, oh, broke it. Ah! <laughs> see, see, you. Hello, hello, girls, 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 girls. See, you need to be street smart. So when my pastor finished with me, I realized how stupid I was. Say somebody wants to spoil your life and you are begging the person, please, please. From that point, I became radical. <laughs> if I am going in a bus and you are a man sitting beside me and you are using your elbow to choke my breast, like, I'm, eh, once I adjust and you do not adjust, yes, now they are fond of it. They will be tapping current. They will be doing like this. If, oh, oh. Thank you. So if you are sitting beside me and you are trying to tap current and I adjust and you do not answer the next thing now, you just hear my voice in the old bus. Oh, God, why they touch my breast now? Oh, I am sitting in front of you and you are using your knees to push my bum bum. And I adjust and you do not stop. Oh, God, stop touching my bum bum now. What about the ones of bike? That, that one of bike is, let me tell you one experience. I was coming from Iano Solo. No, no, no. Pressing you is good. This one happened from my back. That one it was worse. I was I was coming on a bike and the guy was beside me and he was molesting me with his penis. I've seen ladies who get down from bike and they are wet on the back. Cement from the guy. And you are just walking around with rubbish on your body because of one man who could not control his thing. And I, I adjusted, I was in the middle. I just said the man, you know, I said, guy, if I shook your elbow, now ground, you go fight. <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> there is no, uh, no, no, no. There is no psychedelism when it comes to taking care of your body. No. Somebody wants to rape you. You are saying, oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Ah. Red box, what, what? If I shook you. <laughs> Hey! All right, so so we're gonna close now. We are closing now. You have a question? Okay, ask your question. Take care of children that are special. Okay, how do you take care of children that are special? Now, listen. If you're gonna take care of children that are special, the first thing, the first thing you need to do is to be knowledgeable you need to know and one of the ways that you will know is that if you have a child that is special make sure you have an appointment with a psychologist let them examine the child or take the child to professionals let them check the spectrum they may not get the perfect spectrum with which that child is on so they now tell you oh, some people are this kind of so, so go and read about that thing have there are test books there are many things online that you can download and learn about this and there has to be somebody who is always physically available for those children you cannot have a special child and be busy you can't have an uh, eight to five job and then you get back home by 10 p.m that child one day they will kill that child for you because they can't handle the child you understand these children they need compassion. They need understanding. Some children go to the point of banging their head on the wall. Just any small stress, they begin to bang their head on the wall. Some don't sleep from night till morning. They'll be shouting till morning. They'll be, <gasps> they'll be doing those things from night till morning. So if you, one person must be readily available for that child. And everybody in the family needs to be educated about what that thing is so that they can be good supports. Grandparents, family members, neighbors, church members. You know there's children's church. And in children's church, they don't know jack about it. You tell them, you walk up to them and tell them in children's church, see, oh, this child is a special child. These are the challenges, these are the challenges, these are the challenges. You understand? And then there are medications that they give them. 
Those medications are not drugs for something bad, but they are medications like food supplements that would help their brain development. Now, the good news is this. It's not as if those children will remain like that for life. Some get to a point whereby when that aspect of their life is mastered, you can leave them. For example, there's a man that I have known since. His name is Rod Parsley. He's a pastor, American pastor. He has a son. The boy is in his 30s now. I think the last child is in his 30s and he was autistic. The last time I checked, he was about to get married. Although his speech was is still slow. He's not speaking straight the way I'm speaking straight, but his speech is slurred. So when he's talking, you check. He's like, this morning, on my way to this place, the tricycle I entered, I noticed the tricycle man that is like, this man is on a spectrum. He was too slow. He was not well coordinated. He's not alcohol. But when I checked him, I just felt it's like this man has this thing. You understand? So if now, now we have so much knowledge that you can research and quickly attack the matter. Because can I tell you the truth? A child is special because there are special things the child needs to accomplish on this earth. And you must know the specialty of the child to groom that child to a point whereby at the end of the day you can answer off and say okay you can now continue with your life but let me tell you the other side you the child may stay with you for life that's the reality of life there may not be somebody that will marry that child yes i don't want to say some things because we are recording but there are people that i know that have children that are special and it's tough. It's not easy. It's tough. And those children, they are grown, but they can't even go to university. They can't go to university. They can't walk outside like it. So those children may... And the, the, another good side is that most of them stay very long on this earth. They live old. They live long. There's a lady I saw. She should be close to 40 or in her 40s. This lady, she she does artwork with her legs. They dumped her from childhood, so they picked her up. All these um, homes picked her up. She makes money. The major money they have in that home is from, from her. She paints with her legs. She's not crippled, though, but she paints with her legs. If she paints for you, it was all over the news, I think last year. So you have to you have to check. There's there's this guy. Um, ah, oh Lord. It's not Shakespeare. There's this. Um, it's not Da Vinci. One one Italian guy like that. That boy, no school accepted him, but he was painting. So the father took his paintings to the best actor, the best um, painter in their community. And when the man saw it, he said, "You have a talent in your house." And schools rejected him. So the man started training him. His painting was the most expensive painting then. So, there has to be somebody who is readily available and is knowledgeable enough. And people pay a lot of money. <laughs> that place, Kobams, Asuko. You see Kobams? One of his children. Okay, has autism. Just imagine. Hmm. He plays keyboard. He's a producer. He's, as in, he's talented. But God bless him that... He always had support structures and he found the love of his life. A blind man. And he's married. He has children. And he's very rich. Oh. He's one of the richest producers in this country. He's very rich. You understand? There's Finally, before we go, there's this guy called Nick. Pastor Noel told me that um, Nick was in their church two weeks ago. He's on water. Do you know Nick? Nick is an Australian. He doesn't have arms. He doesn't have legs. You know him. Nick travels all over the world to preach the gospel. He can drive car. He can swim. He can brush his teeth. He can cook. He bathes his children. He's small like this. He doesn't have arms and he doesn't have legs. He can, he's a pastor. He was in my pastor's church two weeks ago. My pastor came here and our pastor Noah was here. Uh, he came here last year, no, two years ago. He was here. 
He went to his church in the U.S. He came to preach. He snapped him and sent the pictures to me. That we don't have any excuse. You don't have any excuse. No arms, no legs. And he does not have low self-esteem. Neither did it as he tilted towards, towards pride. And he's married. His wife is beautiful. That can only be love. Love and God. For a woman to marry a man that looks disabled. That can only be God and love. Because God is love. <laughs> you get God is love. Alright, so we're going to close right now because I was giving 50 minutes. You get, if we continue, we'll not stop. But I want you guys to know that you need to start working on yourself. When people bring you down, don't bring yourself down. When people tell you, look at you. Look at you, you are a boyfriend. You are even a virgin. Look at you. Tell them that's your... Yes, that's what they do. They make you feel worthless so that you can join them. I remember, I, I shared this at the school I went to last week. We had a friend, his name was Innocent. And he had a girlfriend and he never had, he didn't have sex with that girl. So we started calling him impotent. From innocent to impotent. So each time we say, ah, impotent, how far? And that thing started getting at him. That he started having sex with girls too. So we brought him down to our low level then. Don't let anybody bring you down to a low level. When they can be doing it. Preach to them, advise them. If they don't change, that's their kettle of fish. But you don't bring yourself down to their level. Don't. Because we live in a society where they make you feel worthless if you don't have some things. Maybe you are not driving big car. You know, you are not a Yahoo boy. You are not a... You understand? Alright, so thank you everybody. This is where we're going to draw the curtain today. God bless you. And I promise you that we will not stop Yeah, We are going to continue on this topic. We're going to continue, definitely. God bless you. Thank you very much.